Usually you would see me raving on about a monitor that Asus sent me. However, outside of the usual gaming centric lifestyle I have, I actually do a lot of video content creation. Every video needs to be edited and while many think that video editing is simple, if you actually respect the art, you need to have a decent display in order for your content to come out the way you intend it to be. That's why when Asus sent me the new Pro Art display, I was pretty excited to use it as my daily driver for content creation and productivity tasks. The Asus Pro Art display, this model being the PA348CGV model, is a high-end 1440p monitor that boasts some excellent build quality and features that make this feel future-proof to a certain degree. The display is 34 inches wide, which makes it an ultra-wide monitor. It is an IPS panel with 120Hz support, features HDR and a 98% DCI-P3 color gamut. Of course, some of these features aren't as great as others. For example, the HDR isn't technically up to standard due to the IPS's inability to reach the desired brightness levels to achieve proper HDR. The speakers are also not so great, but outside of these issues, the ASUS Pro Art display definitely offers some great quality if you're looking for a new monitor. First off, we have the design of the display. This monitor is beautiful in every direction. In the box, there are two stands. You can opt for the usual metal stand that is easily attached to the monitor and stands on the desk, or you can go for the desk clamp stand which gets attached to the display by tightening the bolt while holding the monitor in place. I opted for the so-called C clamp because I wanted more space under the monitor to store stuff. Most people will probably go for the basic stand, but I love the option available for those who want a bit more. Everything on the Asus Pro Art display is held up by the same arm. No matter which stand you choose, the display will move and rotate in the same way. The panel can move up and down by 11.5 centimeters. It can tilt up to 23 degrees and swivel 30 degrees both left and right. I just felt that the C clamp made things a lot neater. It did create a bit of a more wobble on the display when typing and moving, but it wasn't a major issue. The Pro Art display also has some great cable management thanks to the arm. There's a hole at the bottom where everything is fed through and the ports are situated on the underside of the back. When it comes to port, you'll find the power port, earphone jack, HDMI 2.0 port, one display port 1.4, a USB-C port and three USB-A ports. There are also two USB-A ports found on the left hand side of the monitor too. Installing the stand is also pretty simple. The arm slots into the back of the display and you'll have to screw on the desired stand. Removing it is also quick thanks to the button that releases the arm from the back panel. Speaking of stands and such, you can also mount this panel thanks to the Visa support. Other than the stand and how to install it and the C-clamp stand which I highly recommend everybody uses, there isn't a lot going on here. There's a control panel at the bottom right of the panel that is used to change the format, color profiles, enable HDR and other features, and there's a nub to move around the menu. There's also a power button and there's a little light indicator under the power button. The panel itself is quite big and quite thick. It is 34 inches in diameter and there are two centimeter bezels along the top and the sides. Behind it, there are a lot of vents, which might get a bit dusty, so you'll need to make sure to keep that clean. Given that this display is for creators and productivity, I used my M1 Mac Mini to test the monitor out. It also helps that this Asus Pro Art display uses USB-C, which is a godsend. This means you can connect a supported device to the monitor with one simple cable. This cable will then pass through audio, high-res display functions, an anti-watt power feed, and feed all the USB-A ports with power and data support at the same time. It makes life so much easier, and best of all, it is only one cable, so it's so much neater too. USB-C support on the M1 Mac Mini meant that Mac OS was a dream to work with too. I enabled HDR, fiddled with some settings and immediately had HDR working on the monitor and working in only specific areas where HDR content was being played. But here's the thing with this HDR on this monitor. It isn't that great. The HDR certification is only 400, meaning it isn't a very bright display. Don't expect any sort of super peak brightness here at all. There's also no local dimming, so the IPS panel is on all the time, even when you have a simple image on the screen. While the display HDR isn't great, everything else on the monitor is superb. There's 100% Adobe RGB coverage and 98% DCI-P3. ASUS has also packed in Kalman Verified Sub-2 Delta E calibration into this display. Outside of that fancy calibration, the IPS monitor also means that you'll get a 1000 to 1 conscious ratio and a 2 millisecond response time. There are some important things to mention in regards to the feature set here. If you decide to use HDR or another specific color profile on this monitor, you won't be able to adjust the brightness. In fact, it completely disables most of the settings on the monitor. It shouldn't be an issue for those who are looking for a specific color profile because that's why those profiles are there, to lock you into using the monitor a specific way. The display also packs in some speakers which are fairly decent. They get quite loud and while they don't pack any powerful bass, the sound is clear which should be enough as your daily driver.
I was just annoyed how cumbersome adjusting the volume can be on this display. Instead of letting me turn things up and down on my Mac, I had to adjust the sound by going into the OSD menu on the display, going down to volume and turning it up and down from there. Surely Asus could have implemented a simple volume control dial or a shortcut here or just one button to turn things up and down instead of me going into one menu into another menu to adjust the volume. But the display is pretty great and I did enjoy my time with it. I enjoyed even playing some games running at 4040p and taking advantage of the AMD FreeSync Pro, but I also enjoyed having this extra workspace to open more tabs and see more on my screen. This came in handy when editing videos and even doing daily creative tasks in Affinity Photo. There's just so much room to do so much more. I combined the monitor with Universal Control on my Mac Mini, iPad Pro and MacBook Pro. This way I could move across all these fantastic screens using one mouse, drag and drop content and so much more. It's definitely every Kratos dream setup. There's a lot you can do on this display, but you'll have to be willing to splurge a lot of money on it too. It will set you back 27,999 Rand, which isn't cheap at all. At the same time, it does a great job in most cases and does it well. The HDR issues are definitely something you should keep in mind, especially if you want a bright and vibrant display. Other than that, I didn't have any other gripes with the Asus Pro Art display besides its price tag, of course. It is a pricey display, but you pay for the quality, and that's definitely not lacking here. So those are my thoughts on the Asus Pro Art display. Remember this model was the PA348CGV. It's planned to launch by the end of August in South Africa. I'll leave links down below for where to find it when it does launch. As usual, thanks for watching and please do consider liking and subscribing. It really helps having the numbers so that we can get more content like this up. I really do appreciate it. And make sure you check out Glitch.online for more gaming and tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.